Cuba, it's me, Elliot Habanero. I love wrestling. I love talking about wrestling. That's why I'm doing The Willow Show, which stands for Wrestling is Life. Life is Wrestling. This is episode 12, but this is also part of my special documentary on Ike the Crippler Shaw. This is part 2. Now, if you checked out part 1, then you know who I'm talking about. If you don't, quick rundown. Ike the Crippler Shaw was the man who ran the first wrestling school I went to, and he was quite a character. He was a legend in a bad way, and he has been known for telling the most outrageous lies, doing the most funniest, ridiculous things ever, and you could never create someone like Ike Shaw. So anyway, at the end of my part one story, I had just got to the wrestling school and spent my first week getting a little bit to know Ike Shaw, although for a couple of those days he was stuck in his bedroom. So anyway, I remember he had a meeting with me in powder. It was very serious. No drugs, no steroids, no girls in the school, nothing. But I finally got a job through the temp agency. I worked from 6 in the morning till 6 at night at Cambridge Towel. And then I would walk home, which was quite a walk because I hadn't figured out the bus thing yet. And practice would start at 7. Now, after a couple of days of practicing, the practices were really hard. The first week, I wasn't even allowed in the ring. Juan Ortiz and Sid Summers were there. They were teaching us right. We were just working on tying up. That's it. I wasn't allowed to take any bumps. Nothing. The first hour, we would do cardio. Non-stop cardio. We would do running. We would do stretches. We would do rolls. We would do squats. Everything. Then after that, the second hour, we would do submission wrestling on each other. Like, the first two guys would start, and you would do everything but punching and kicking and try to submit each other. And then the last hour, we would start, like, one day, we would just work on a hammerlock. It was good training. The chain wrestling was very well done. So a couple, one day, Ike decided to walk in. I mean, he had a camera in his office to watch us. And being the young, stupid kid that didn't know how to shut up, I said, Ike! When are you going to train us? He said. Remember, I can't do Ike's voice very good. Bro, I'm the advanced guy. You're not ready for me yet. I'm the guy that polishes you off when you're ready. And I thought, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. Ike is only going to do it when I'm ready for Ike to be at his level for him to finally teach me. Which, of course, never happened because I never made it to that level. That level is impossible to make it. He also showed me one thing, though. He showed me the famous slider punch. That was his go-to. The bear swipe slider punch. Anyway, so, I've been doing wrestling, and this was July 2000 that I moved here. Well, a couple of weeks later, we got word. Ike was going to promote a show. Now, he used to promote shows under ICW. Well, this one, he had switched to ACW, probably something to do with a lawsuit or claiming bankruptcy, something like that. Well, he switched to ACW, and he was going to run a show in Cambridge, Ontario at the Steelworkers Hall. Now, Ike, knowing how to be such a role model and great figure that he was, a commanding authority figure, called me into the office one day. Now, Elian, I've been watching your practices. Which wasn't true. He probably maybe once watched for five minutes. And he never asked the trainers how I was doing. So he was just blowing smoke up my butt. Anyway, he says to me, Elian, I'm watching your practicing. You're coming along not bad. Uh, we're having this show in October. And I'd like to say you made it. You're going to be on the show. Now, I was elated. I was so ecstatic. My whole life, my whole dream was just to be a wrestler. Just to do this one match, my first match, was the great, like, that was the greatest day of my life so far up until that point. So I felt so proud. I was phoning my friends from back home. I mean, when you first move, everyone stays in touch with you still because you're still fresh on everyone's mind. And I was telling everybody I was so proud that I was going to accomplish what I set out to accomplish. And he says, well, you, you got to fill out this paperwork to get a wrestling license from Ken Hayashi. $75. Okay, no problem. I was honored to have that wrestling license. Like, honestly, kept it in my scrapbook. I have it somewhere. I'll find it on a future episode. So anyway, I was picked to wrestle Don Coyote, who was, you know, he was a good uh, young talent as well. And we thought that we could have an okay match. And uh, Robbie McAllister, he had just started training. So he was going to be the ref for the match. And because we were new, 
we were, uh, we had to work on the match a lot, like in practice and told what we could do and what we couldn't do. We were going to be the opening contest. We weren't allowed to do anything big. So anyway, I was just, I was so excited for this match. Now, just to remind from part one in my story, Ike had made me pay my tuition. Now it was like $4,000 and, um, I only had like half of that, so I had to borrow the rest off my mom and start paying her back, which I was doing from the Cambridge Towel job. And uh, so anyway, I owed her some money still, right? Well, Ike comes to me like two weeks before the show. Well, he calls me in his office. He didn't get up. Anyway, he says to me, Elian, I'm afraid I can't let you be a part of the show. I said, why, Ike? What did I do wrong? Like I was, I was really being careful not to get on anyone's nerves, to do everything right. I mean, I got into it with the trainer one time, but that was just me being young and hard-headed. I apologized. I, you know, I made up for it. I was earning their respect. And I said, what? What could I have possibly done not to be on the show? And he says, I just found out, which of course was it true also, because he always knew, you don't have your wrestler's insurance. I said, I didn't even know we needed wrestler's insurance. You never mentioned it before. He said, if you don't give me the $1,200 for the wrestling insurance, you can't be on the show. Well, I thought, I really want to be on the show, and if I'm going to be on any future shows, I need to have wrestler's insurance, obviously. Um, it's $1,200. So I picked up the phone, and I called my mom. Mom, please, I know I just started paying you back the other money. Please, I, I need to be on the show. I need wrestler's insurance, $1,200. Please, is there any way you can lend me the money? Being the good supportive mom that she was, knowing that I was going to work hard and pay her back, she sent me the money. And I got the wrestler's insurance that never existed, that I never actually got. But hey, I got to be on the show. So I was so happy. So then, I did the match. You know, for a first time match, it, it really wasn't that bad. I mean, we probably practiced it like 50 times anyway. So it wasn't that bad. The funniest thing is I was supposed to be the bad guy, the heel, and because I had no heel charisma, they ended up cheering me when I won at the end, which was completely stupid on my part, but it wasn't that bad. Well, a couple days after the show, I calls me into the office. He says, uh, Alien, I don't know if I could let you wrestle anymore. I'm just, when I saw you out there, I was just so embarrassed for you. You just looked so bad. You just look so small and no presence, which was pretty much true, I mean, I guess. He says, I, you need to take some steroids, brother. I said, I thought you said that we weren't allowed to take steroids, Ike. You said you'd kick me out of the school. Well, I'm going to make an exception for you. I happen to know this guy. He's a doctor. I can hook you up with the best steroids ever. You're going to be huge in a matter of six months. I said, but Ike, I don't. I don't have any money left. I already borrowed money for the school. I already borrowed money for the insurance. Like, I'm paying it all back. I have no money left. I, I can't afford steroids right now. So then, after that, the next show was a Leamington show. I was not allowed to be on it. I was supposed to be a ref, but I didn't get to do it. And that's just part two of Ike the Crippler show. I have so many more stories. This can go on for at least ten more episodes. That goes up to about November of 2000. This is just the first four months. And even in those four months, I have so many more stories. I got to keep it short. I don't want to talk for an hour. But this is part two of the Ike the Crippler Shaw story from my point of view. Things that I experienced through him. This is the Willow Show, episode 12, the Hall of Fame tonight. Also check out tomorrow, there's Barry Wrestling in Ontario and Superkick Pro Wrestling is putting on like an open house training seminar. And of course, Hall of Fame tonight, tomorrow, episode 13, I will be talking about the Hall of Fame. It's going to be so great. Anything else that's on my mind, we'll talk about. Because I love wrestling. And remember, like, or you get a leg drop. Comment, or you get a clothesline. Subscribe, or you get a suplex. I'm your host, Elian Habanero. I love wrestling. It's tattooed on my arm. Cuba!